Already started the video. Why are you starting? Sweet, awesome. Okay, cool, yay. Yeah. Hey, awesome. Okay, we're gonna learn about Jesus, of course. Woo! Jesus! Go, Jesus! Yeah! Keep her out. But this is gonna be the story about um, the. Which one? Um. The dying girl and the bleeding woman um, story. Um, but before getting into that, uh, well, at the very beginning of this, it talks about Jesus is crossing over this river or this, you know, this type of lake, body of water, whatever you want to call it, and he has a crowd follow him as he gets off and, and follows him around, and they call it a crushing crowd. Now. Today, when I think of a crushing crowd, there's this thing going around in pop culture and just everything. Something, some kind of shake, you know, not like steak and shake, but a shake, um, like a Harlem shake, you know. Con los terroristas. He begged and begged this guy. 
He, he got on his hands and knees and, and got away from all of his pride. Because when you're down on your hands and knees, you're, you, give, you give up, you're submitting to whoever you are bowing to. And this is his only daughter. And, and, and I believe that if I had a daughter, I don't, I don't have one. Uh, for right now. But a woman that's important in my life is my mom. I don't know about you guys, but that's the most important woman in my life. And if she was, di if she was dying or hurt or anything, I would do anything it took to see her, to see her get better. So Jesus did not say a word to Jairus. He just went to, to help him out. He just acted. He didn't say one word. He just acted. So, so Jairus pleaded with him, sat there and begged him on his knees to save his daughter. So Jesus working through this crowd, trying to get through. This crowd, he, he can't walk through it. He's getting pushed along with this crowd. Now here comes the story within a story, because this story itself is a story within a story and always within our own. Now in uh, verse 25 and 26, a woman from, uh, suffering from bleeding for 12 years had endured much under many doctors. She had spent everything she had and was not helped at all. On the contrary, she became worse. So unlike Jairus, this woman was not popular. She, people did not know her. She was not accepted by the public. She was an outcast. And in those days, when you were unclean, you were ceremonial unclean, you had to not only live outside of the, um, the town or anything, you couldn't participate in church. Um, being unclean uh, for girls, you know, if you were on your period, the only other country I could get for guys actually think about this last night, is the only country I can think of for guys is like having diarrhea every single day for 12 years. It's just so unclean, um, and it's an issue, so if you, you know, you wake up, oh, diarrhea. So, so. That's, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. So, <laughs> um, but for 12 years she was doing this, but not only did she have to live outside of this place, she had to cover her hand like this. She had to put her face, her hand over her face, and then stick her hand out like a stop sign, and say "tame, tame, tame," which meant "unclean" in Hebrew. And to say to to walk down the street with a bunch of people and then see like your friends and stuff and just sit here saying "tame, tame, tame," that would be embarrassing. Everything that she touched would be unclean. Um, and everyone that she touched would be unclean. Um, no, no, she just... If she could be healed, it's not just her health that would come back to her. It would be her entire life. Because it's not just the, the problem that's on the inside that's hurting her. It's her social life. It's not being able to talk to your friends. What if you couldn't get on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, any of that? Or YouTube, we would be dead, wouldn't we? Yeah, you guys can talk. Anyway, we would be dead socially because that's what our life revolves around. Um, not saying those are bad things at all. Don't get it twisted. Um, <coughs> but she couldn't. Do, she couldn't talk to anybody. She couldn't be around or anything. So she would get her whole life back. If that is that she could suddenly be made new. She had been bleeding and dying the same amount of time that this, this girl, this, this, this guy's daughter, had been alive. 12 years. I don't know. There, there may be some speculation on the, the 12 or whatever, but I don't, I don't know. <coughs> um, she had spent her whole life savings on this treatment. She's seen doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor. If you read Luke's gospel, he talks about the same thing, but he leaves aside this whole part about the doctor. Well, he might mention it, but he kind of doesn't get into it because Luke was a doctor, so he doesn't want to make a bad name for the doctors. Um, but she came to every single doctor and became worse. So she was being used because 
doctor after doctor, if, if you're in a town and there's a few doctors, one doctor tries to heal, probably going to tell another doctor about what just happened. And, and so she's just going to keep getting used and used and passed along and just get money. They're just going to take her money and she's just going to be used. So it's, it's one, of the, one of the stories inside of it that I see is this, is this woman being used for her money. Maybe nobody's doing anything physically to her, but this thing is just eating away at her and nobody is trying to help her. But then she saw Jesus. Having heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his robe. Since she had this problem and she was unclean, she could not just go up to Jesus and be like, hey, can you, can you save me? Can you help me out? Do you want to throw a couple my way? She couldn't do that. She could not just do that. So I imagine her just getting on her hands and knees, crawling up to Jesus with her nails just gone and bleeding hands and just man, this old, frail woman that has nothing else. She's, she stinks from, from the body, from not being able to wash, from, from the dry blood, from everything. Just nasty. And she was about to give up until she saw Jesus. For she said, if I can just touch his robe, I will be well. She had a kind of faith of, if I can just, just touch him, I'll be okay. It wasn't just sight that would heal her. It wasn't just seeing Jesus. It was the, the act of touching. She couldn't just follow along in the crowd until he got to that house and saved that kid. She had to touch his robe. Um, with Jesus, now, if I just touch him, he would heal me. And sure enough, instantly, 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 her flow of blood ceased, and she sensed in her body that she was cured from her affliction. Instantly, not here, here's a little pill, take that and take it for two weeks and you'll be all right, or here, stay in this hospital bed and we'll have the amnesia slow down and, and get you better and you'll be off tomorrow. Immediately, in a blink of an eye, in a snap of a finger, just 12 years, 12 years of suffering, gone by one act of faith, by stepping out and, and going beyond barriers and touching Jesus. At once, Jesus realized in himself that power had gone out of him. He turned around to the crowd and said, Who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing against you, and you say, Who touched me? So this crowd coming around Jesus is, is just, he's, he's being led by the crowd because they're pushing against him. He's trying to move, but they just keep pushing against him. And he asked who touched me? I mean, seriously, Jesus. This, this woman just cut you off, and that guy just, like, hit you, um, and you ask who touched me. I think that's, I think that's Peter. Um, it, it just says disciple in, in, in this. Um, but I think it's Peter just judging by who Peter was, and I, I think that's who it was. But man, man, dog. There's people all around. We can't really do this motion here. How can you ask, who touched me, man? Um, but he goes on. So he goes looking around to see who had done this. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came with fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the truth. She found out she, 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 she knew that Jesus knew. And she came trembling and with fear because she didn't know what was going to happen. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be free from your affliction. 
Your faith has healed you. And healed here means, just like before, both from her physical spirit, but also her spirit. Um, also her spirit and her, her livelihood. Um, trusting in Jesus now and, and having that spiritual salvation. It wasn't about amount of faith. It wasn't about the amount of faith that this woman had. She had a whole heck of a lot, but it didn't matter how much she had. Jesus didn't say, oh, you know, you had a bunch of faith, yeah, go ahead, go on. Or he didn't say, you don't really have enough, so come back maybe tomorrow when we get some more. He didn't say that. He gave her her life. Now we get back to the other story about Jarius and, and, and his daughter. Now imagine Jarius. Wait. Wait. Yes. Imagine Jarius. <laughs> Making sure I was there. Uh, imagine Jarius through this whole process. My daughter is dying. Are you kidding me? You're going to stop here and save this. <coughs> My daughter's dying. And you already said you would save her. Come on, do something. Um, so they get back to him. And while he was still speaking, people from the synagogue leader's house, people from the synagogue's leader's house had said, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Now, he's, now, now this is a part of the story that is part of our story. All of scripture is part of our story. But this part is the, the, the people at their house, the people that were at his house that saw his daughter dying said that she's dead. This, this I feel, is, is just the world talking to us and saying, you know, maybe you're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You, you, you weigh too much. You, you're too skinny. You're not tall enough. You're, short, you're too short. You don't have makeup on. You don't have, you don't have the qualities that I want from you, so I'm just going to... That's what the world tells us. And it's going to keep telling us if we keep listening. Now, in that, he might be doubting what Jesus said he could do. Jesus acted. He didn't say what he was going to do, but he acted. And I'm going to go save <coughs> Jairus' daughter. But these guys had told her that, told him that his, his daughter was already dead. So he would have doubt. It's not wrong to have doubt. It is not wrong. Doubting does not mean lack of faith. <coughs> I believe that you can't have faith without doubt. Because you just, you just can't mind. So these people believe he could heal. They believe that Jesus could heal a dying girl. But they didn't believe that Jesus could heal a dead girl. Big difference because one was dead and one was still alive. Um, but moving on. When Jesus overheard what was, what was said, he told the synagogue leader, don't be afraid, only believe. So this part, he's, he's having, um, you're not good, you're ugly, all this other stuff. And Jesus said, it's okay, just believe. And he's, what he's hearing is, your daughter's dead, your daughter's dead, your daughter's dead. And Jesus says, just believe. Just believe. Easier said than done, obviously. Um, 30, uh, verse 37. <coughs> He did not let anybody accompany him except for Peter, James, and John. He's James' brother. There's six, six people walking over. Him. They came to the leader's house. And he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. So, okay, imagine a day where there's people standing outside just crying obnoxiously. Just whining, just, ah, I'm not going to do it. It'd be really annoying, and it would 
pretty much take you off. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> but just crying, just, and they get paid for it. It's not that they even care what's going on. It's that they get paid for doing that. They don't care that this girl is dead or this girl is dying. They're getting paid for it. I feel, I, I like making contrast, I think that's with today's, I think it's a lot with, with, um, with two-faced people. It's hard to talk about two-faced people and judging at the same time. But two-faced people, they will be like, hey, man, I'm sorry that, I'm sorry she broke up with you. But on the inside, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go get her. Or, or she's like, she goes up to her girlfriend and says, I'm sorry that he, he broke up with you, or whatever. But she's on the inside just like, man, thanks to you. you know, and, just, and just being two-faced. It's the same thing, just two-faced people don't get paid. It's the funny thing. Two-faced people do not get paid. But Jesus says to these people that he's, that she is not dead, but just sleeping. She ain't. She ain't with, she ain't with my dad. She just. Uh, in verse 40, they started laughing at him. <laughs> laughing at him. But he put them all outside. He took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the place where the child was. So he just, he just kicked all these people out. So he went from crowd to crowd and just kicked these people out. It's kind of like, you know, like a dog. I don't know about you guys, but we, when we eat dinner together at the table, we have two dogs, Rex and Roxy, loving them to death, but they love food now. Yes, so they like scraps. They go like yeah, they get, exactly, exactly. So, what do you do with them? You kick them away. Yeah, that's, they just, you know, they just slap them, you know? I don't know, Jesus really slapped people, but, you know, just, he kicked, he kicked them out of the house. He kicked them away. He got them out. They laughed at him. And laughed at Jesus. They saw Jesus' face and laughed at him. But if today we could see Jesus, would we not laugh at him the same way? And back in those days, well, and back in those days, if you could afford this professional mourner, get all this money for them, it's just, it's just funny being paid to cry. It's a movie. It sounds like a movie show. Sorry, that was inappropriate. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, back to the Bible. Um, in 41, through the rest of it, then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha, whom I don't know how to speak. Um, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, immediately the girl got up and began to walk. She was 12 years old. Now, it's the same immediately as, as the suffering woman, where immediately she, she was cured. Immediately this girl got up. She wasn't just like, oh, snooze. No. <laughs> Oh, hey, Jesus, can we see it for a little bit? No, she didn't do that. She just got up. At this, they were utterly astonished, jaws dropping to the ground, in my opinion. Um, then he gave them strict orders um, that no one should know about this and said that she should be given something to his mark and listen because he started telling people. Exactly. Probably didn't listen to him, but good guy. There's no one who to him. Mm -hmm. um, but he gave, why, why would you say to not tell anybody that yeah, we have this? Why, why would you question me, sir? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. And also to give her something to eat. I mean, wake up and have something to eat, I mean, yeah, that's awesome. It'd be nice snack, is it? Is. But I'm gonna let that question linger. Now, if you guys can get anything today, probably didn't, but this, this part, beyond all of your suffering, this is this is the we have we have a story 
then we have the other story, the story within the story. I don't have a whiteboard. I'm not a cool, like, youth well, pastor we guy. We could have got you. Yeah, get your marker board. We could have got you. Write objectives on there. Write my three main points. Exactly. <laughs> but, okay, now the first one is, is the first story within the other story and always within our story. And this is my part on what I think is, is our part of our story. Beyond all of our suffering and hardships, we need to be able, we need to believe that Jesus makes you whole and makes us all. We are all broken, but God is bringing us back together to become what he intended us to be. But sometimes we stop and refuse him that access, not just now, but all the time. In the midst of our brokenness, I have a hard time believing that anybody here can sit here and say, Oh, I'm not broken. I'm okay. Life is cool. Yeah. I'm doing a home shake. Yeah. Life is fancy free. Woohoo. Yeah. No. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> um, but we put, we put on a mask. We, we just put on a mask and, and suck it up. We pretend we are not broken deep down. And we just keep going. And right now, some of you are saying, stop, stop, this is too much. I cannot bear what you are talking about. It's too much for me. I don't care if I'm broken. I don't know if that part of my life is broken. I'm going to ignore it, and I'm going to continue, and I'm going to keep doing what I do. I'm just going to keep masking just suck it up. And I'm just going to keep going. And you find some extra strength within. Somewhere deep down inside you. And say that everything is fine. Like the pain, the hurt, the, the mom that just left, the dad that just left, the, the friend just curious to the side, or, or the relationship problem, or you know, all these different things just masking and saying that it's not fine, or or the computer just, you know, any kind of problem, saying that everything's okay, I'll, I'll be all right. I know, I know it's not a big deal, you know, and, 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 those, and those things aren't big deals, you know, but it is a big deal. And those things are big deals, and the warning signs are there, and we are barely hanging on. It's like you're going down the road thinking that you're okay, that everything is just fancy free. I have Jesus, everything is fine. Yes. I'll get to that. Um, but going on the road and just going through the motions of every day, not paying attention, these warning signs are coming up like billboards. And you don't notice it until the billboard lands smack dab in the middle of the street. You just barely hang on. You do somersaults in your car as you hit the sign and you land smack tail on the ground. And we ignore these blimps and signs at the risk of losing our own souls. We're too scared. We're, we're okay with changing different stuff like having, a, having an iPhone and changing different things about our style or how we dress. But we're not okay with changing who we really are, changing the person that is inside of us, the way that we live our life, not just going through the motions. Um, do, do you believe that Jesus can make you whole? It's one thing to be saved and believe in Jesus, but it's another thing to be healed and set free for eternity and made whole. And it's, it's very much possible to be saved and be miserable. To be like, oh, I have Jesus right here. Thank you. Thank you, God, for everything that you do for me. And the next minute, you're miserable. You're in your, in your room just crying because you don't know what's going on. You don't know what to do. Don't believe that all that stuff, that once you come to Jesus, everything is going to be perfect. Because first of all, we're not perfect people. 
And, and if life was perfect, we would still be in the garden. We would still be there in the presence of God if life was meant to be perfect. But life sucks. Yes. <laughs> it does. But with Jesus, it is good. I am not saying that it is bad. It is good. But it's not easy. It is not easy at all. But Jesus has healing within his wings. He just wants you to come to him. It's not about having an amount of faith. It's not, oh, I have enough here to last me to hear and then I might pick some up here at this conference, or I might pick up some here on this Wednesday night, or this small group meeting, or I'll pick up some faith here. It's about daily living our lives out for God. Just like in the story where, where they're talking about, the, Jesus says to the, to the sick woman that your faith has healed you. It wasn't about the amount, it, it, well, she did have a lot of faith, but it wasn't just But it's not, once I have enough faith, I'll be, I'll be good. I'm okay. I'm, I don't need any more faith. I'm going to go to heaven. Yay. I don't need any more faith. But we need to continually, continually grow in our faith. That if we just have this point where we just stop, you're going to decline. And if you're okay stopping at, at there, then, then there's, there's much more to go. Now, as you leave these doors, I don't know what everybody has planned. I'm hoping to go eat Mexican with one of my friends from Bethel. Um, but as you leave these doors and get into the real world, this is the real world, but, you know, get into just back to school after this weekend and, and, and finish off this semester. You know, summer, summer's coming up and we're still ready for summer and stuff is so much easier in summer. It's not. But you can pretend everything is okay and wear that mask you always put on. And that there is not broken pieces and act like it's not there. Or you can look to Jesus, who has healing within his wings, and say, yes, I want to be made whole. I want to be new again. I want to love you like you first loved me. I want to daily live for you. I want to thirst with the thirsty, be hung, hunger with the hungry, be penitent with the ones in penitentiary. But to be thirsty with the thirsty, hungry with the hunger, hungry, um, and penitent with those in penitentiary. And meaning that when we see that kid that's sitting by himself, yes, this is used a lot, but that kid that's sitting by himself in lunch, to go sit with him, oh, but he stinks. Oh, but he's nasty. Or, oh, but he's a creep. Or, oh, but, or, but, what, why, why, why? Um, but to, to strive to be in Jesus, it's not enough to just say I have faith, but to ask of that faith. I am broken. I want you to save me. I want my life back because I want my life to be the way you intended it for me to be. It's your choice. That's your choice. It's your choice today. Um, I love you guys and I miss you. Love you. I wish that every time I came home that I could like see if we could have a big group meeting. But we're all busy at different times. Uh, but if I keep rambling, I'm gonna keep repeating myself and everything. So I just closing in that it's your choice. Do you want to just keep putting on the mask and masking that makeup on? I have one little quote real quick. Let me get to it. It's in my phone. I came up with this, I just put it in my notes. 
technology is awesome. You can <laughs> um, you can cake on the makeup and put the veil on it or mask it, but one day someone will reveal who you truly are. And when they do, are you who you say you are and who you claim to be? <coughs> or is it a monster under there, just another one? So that's my question. Do you just want <coughs> to be this person that wears this mask, this monster? Maybe nobody else sees it. Put everything on over it. Or are we going to look to Jesus and, and live the way that he intended us to be? Yes, pray for me. God, I thank you. I thank you for all these guys and girls here. I love them so much, man. I, I hope they see this. And I hope that they don't see me. I want them to see you. I want to, them to see the miraculous <coughs> miracles that your son performed. And that, that this life is hard and this life is rough, but with your son, we can overcome anything. We can get past any obstacle. We can go far beyond than we ever imagined. Help us to not just hit this brick wall and stop. Help us to climb and climb and climb until that day you call us home. Help us to make you everything in ourselves, nothing at all, but mere dust as we are. I love you so much. I'll talk to you soon. In your son's name.